everybody, this is Amin and this is Alex. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About LTA. So Rory is not with us today. It's me and Alex. Uh, he is testing the Huawei P30 Pro in Iceland. <laughs> Goal. There I was. Made it. Okay, so Apple launched a whole bunch of new devices in its September keynote. Uh, it's a lot of things to get excited about, especially if you're an uh, Apple fan. I've always been on the fence. I like the Apple ecosystem, but I'm not a fan of the price and uh, sometimes the software can be a bit closed. But this new range of devices with the beginning um, are the iOS 13, iPad, uh, the new iPad OS, uh, the new Watch OS, uh, the new devices, the Watch Series 5, the iPhone 10, uh, sorry, the iPhone 11. 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max and the new iPad is getting me excited because it seems like the ecosystem is much more open now, you can do a lot more things. The segmentation is also quite good as well, so there's a very clear distinction between entry-level devices and higher-end devices. So before we go into all of the details about everything that Apple has launched uh, in September, we're going to talk about the smallest uh, device first, which is the Apple Watch Series 5. So can you tell us a little bit about what n is new with the Apple Watch Series 5? On the surface, the Apple Series 5 is basically an incremental upgrade over the Series 4. You have the two sizes as well, uh, 40 mil 44 millimeters as well as 40 millimeters. And um, I think the biggest difference is that it comes with a compass, and it has always on display. Okay, so yeah. um, let's talk about the, the differences first. Oh no, let's talk about the whole range. So mm. now there's the Apple Watch. Apple Watch Series 4 has been discontinued. It's been replaced by the Series 5. And uh, for, for you guys who are looking at an entry level, a cheaper version, there's an Apple Watch Series 3. So the interesting thing about the Series 3 is that because the existence of the Series 5 now makes an Apple Watch more accessible, right? Because yeah. the Series 3 is now... It's now dropped to a low price of 849 ringgit. That's very cheap for a capable smartwatch. That's, is that after discount or is that's, that the retail price? That's the official retail price right now. Oh wow. Yeah, so for the first time you can get a new Apple Watch, brand new from the store, less than 1,000 ringgit. And the Apple Series 3 is okay? It's or? still pretty good. I mean, you still get the 50 meters uh, uh, water resistance. Mm. You can use take it for a swim. Mm. You also get uh, a same 18 hour battery life. Um, it's pretty good. I don't see any problem. I'm using a Series 2 right now. I'm happy with it. So It looks new. Yeah. Oh, it has. Okay, so the Series 3 has a smaller display. Small display. So you have uh, 42 and 38 millimeters. Okay, so, that's, yeah. so the difference now is that you have the Series 5. So the Series 5 and the Series 4, there's not much difference. Alex uh, mentioned that. So it's the same 40 to 44 millimeter displays. Mm -hmm. Uh, the display is AMOLED. It it's all, OLED. Yeah. Uh, it's OLED. And also 1000 nits as well. For the same brightness. Same brightness. And same uh, pixel density. Uh, pixel density, I'm not too sure, but I, I would say that the series size could be better. I need to check on that. Okay, yeah. so you can check on that. I think it's the same. And they also, the Series 4 and the Series 5 also employs the same power um, and it allows uh, displays to have always on display. So the reason why I brought that up is because uh, LTOP, right, this, this, this technology that's available in the Series 4 and also the Series 5, means that the Series 4 can also do always on display. But it's never, I mean, theoretically yeah. it should be able to. I mean, it seems like it's just a software upgrade, but, but it's not available in the Series 4. It's only available on the Series 5. So that's, um, you know, that's, that's something that I have a problem with with Apple. I guess it's not just Apple, everybody does the same thing as well. That some of the capabilities are software related and not much is hardware related. So in terms of the uh, Apple Watch, uh -huh. uh, the Series 4 and the Series 5 are the same thing essentially. The only difference is the compass. Oh, another thing is the processor as well. So it uses a newer S5 chip. So that gives you uh, more capabilities. I guess more future proof. I guess yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just a, a speed performance upgrade. But you As mentioned a watch, you're you can't using see a, the difference. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're using a Alex, series two. You're using a series two. Yeah. You don't you don't feel it slowing down. Yeah. I don't feel like oh I need a faster watch. You know. Yeah. So and yeah. then the other difference is that uh, the series five is uh, it has more storage. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thirty two gigs of storage, so you can store more offline music. Versus. Uh, the series three is uh, eight gigs only. So 8 gigs and 32 gigs. Yep. So in the Series 5, you get more storage. Um, uh, so because of the separation, right, you cannot 
just say, oh, I want a Series 4 because it's not available anymore. Yeah. Uh, and you, so if you want the latest, you have to get a Series 5. So how much is a Series 5 in Malaysia when it's going to be available? It starts from 1749 1749 In the range of smartwatches, is that like a good price? It's quite, it's quite on the high side actually. Because like, I think if you look at other brands like Samsung, I think their the higher range watches are about 1002, 1003. Mm, so mm. this is quite, quite high. Well, but if you mm. want to get a Series 4, I think you still can, but you need to go to like a authorized visa, like yeah. machines to look for any old stock. Yeah you, yeah, you won't be able to get it online, uh, mm -hmm. on Lazada or whatever, or even in the online official Apple store. Yep. But if you go to a reseller, you can probably get a, uh, Apple Watch Series 4. So if you're wondering, I think a Series 4 is a very good buy. Yeah, it is. If you can get a good price. Like yep. if it's like below a thousand or at least a thousand ringgit, not much more than that. A Series 4 is, is a good buy. If you want to venture into an Apple Watch, a Series 3 is also a not bad buy yep. at about 850 ringgit, which is the cheapest Apple Watch you can get ever. There's never been an Apple Watch that has been below a thousand ringgit, nope. right? There's never unless, been. unless it's like a clearance sale from the reseller, but officially from Apple, yeah. yes, this is cheapest. And then also, um, with the Series 5, what, uh, what comes along with it is uh, new finishes, right? So for yep. the first time, you're going to get titanium, titanium. and uh, ceramic finishes. But unfortunately, those, those uh, finishes are not going to come to Malaysia. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you only get the normal aluminum, aluminum stainless yeah. steel, whatever body. Uh, you're not going to get the sexy titanium and ceramic. Uh, those are available in Singapore. So if you have friends in Singapore, you can probably get that. The ceramic one is uh, slightly more expensive, yeah, right? That's right. Um, how much of the prices do you? In Singapore, the ceramic version starts from one thousand eight hundred ninety nine sing. That's about five thousand eight hundred ringgit. Wow. Yeah, and the titanium version is cheaper. It's going for one thousand one hundred fifty nine sing. It's about three thousand five hundred ringgit. Yeah. yeah. So, so those are mm. premium watches, lah. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, uh, I okay, so I I'm using an Apple Watch, of course, uh, and I have an iPhone XS uh, and also an iPad. Uh, but I'm also using a Note 10 Plus. So this is my Note 10 Plus. I bought it myself. I like the Apple ecosystem, and I like the Apple smartwatch. I like how they they do things. Um, they do it like it's literally like magic. You know, to sync up uh, an AirPod or an Apple Watch with the with an Apple phone, all you need to do is just bring it closer and it does it automatically. I love it that if uh, your phone uh, recognizes the Wi-Fi, immediately you can share it across all devices. The Apple ecosystem is like super good. And if you are if you ask me what smartphone uh, what smartwatch uh, you should get, I would tell you get an Apple Watch. It's just a little bit more I don't know, refined. It's, it's not polished. You don't need to worry about apps. You know, yeah. What if you install an app on an iPhone, it's compatible. You get it on a on an Apple Watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have this. You have. You feel the same also, right? Yeah, it's yeah, so like, seamless. You, you're yeah. not. You're not gonna. You you use a Apple uh, uh, an Android smartwatch as yeah, well, Android right? Yeah, Android Wear, even a Samsung uh, Gear watch. Mm -hmm. And it's very cumbersome. Like you need to install a separate app just to get it to work on the on the watch. Yeah. So yeah. if you want in it, oh no. But the thing is, uh, Watch OS also will have dedicated apps on their on uh, just for the watch mm -hmm. so i guess that opens up um certain capabilities but the thing is what i wanted to say is that okay we've been talking about specifications right so the apple watch series 4 la, the series 3 la, and then now the series 5 right but what we cannot explain to you in uh text right in our postings on sorichinshaw.com is that the quality or the user experience and in this respect right apple watch wins hands down in terms of how easy it is to use. I like, for example, for me, I like to listen to podcasts when I'm coming to work, right? And I like to listen to music when I'm taking the LRT or whatever. Immediately when I open um, uh, Spotify on my, on my iPhone, my Apple Watch automatically goes into Spotify mode mm. and there's a play button and, and it's seamless. I, so with an Android phone, I have to like, uh, <laughs> sorry, with an Android watch, uh, Android Wear yeah. uh, gear, yeah. uh, I have to like, open the app and then you know look for it it doesn't it's not it's that quality that's that's very important um so a lot of people don't get to experience that because you know you you can only either buy one of either and for me the apple watch now has become amazing because previously it was so expensive yep. the first time ever now it's below 800 yep. uh it's, it's below uh, 900 ringgit um 
and you don't lose out on anything. Yeah, all the stuff you want, like fitness tracking is there. Uh, you can take it for a swim. Yeah. Yeah. You also can uh, get your heart rate. What do you use it for? Only for tr- most of the time is uh, to to track my fitness. Let's yeah. say I go for a hike uh-huh. or go for a walk. I use it for tracking. It's yeah. pretty good. Sometimes yeah. just leave the uh, my iPhone at home and just go for a walk, and you can just sync everything nicely. Oh. And so, so for me, it's a good way to motivate you to move more. So you always get constant reminders to yeah. like stand up yeah. or okay, you need to to put more uh, minutes into running to yeah. close the ring. So I think that's pretty good. It really well, helps to motivate you. And okay, so the thing is, right, it's, you, you mentioned that, right? So I'm sure there are some people there uh, be, uh, who's watching and say, oh, you know, uh, an Android smartwatch can do the same. It yeah. can tell you your heart rate and it can yeah. tell you, okay, you need to move and all that. Yeah. Yes, it can. But the thing is, Apple does it Better. differently. Yeah. Yeah, they, it's, it's so seamless. It yeah. actually works. It actually motivates you. So with, mm-hmm. uh, with Apple, they have the rings, right? Yes. And, and for me, uh, again, I've tried a lot of other smartwatches. It works. Uh, maybe if you're like a weekend warrior or like a ultra runner, you every weekend you run, every weekend you cycle. This is not for you. I don't mm. think this is for you. Maybe a Garmin or, or a Polar uh, yeah. would work better. For serious performers, uh, that's for you. Like for me, uh, I dive. So I have a, a, a Garmin uh, Mark 1, uh, a Garmin Descent Mark 1. So it's a specific... It's a, it's a smart watch uh, and it has multi-spots, but it also does diving. So I, I use that. Obviously, I can't use an Apple Watch for that. But for my day-to-day, right, I, I use an Apple Watch because it, 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 it's just so much better. Yeah. The other thing is that, you know, um, it's more accessible. It means more people will now get into the ecosystem. Yeah. And, and the good thing is that you don't lose out. So, for example, the Series 4, which, I've ha- which I have right now, has two things that are very important. Uh, that the Series 3 and the Series 2 that uh, Alex is wearing doesn't have. It doesn't have ECG. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have the sound monitoring. Yeah, it doesn't have the, the new mic. Yeah. yeah. So the sound monitoring for me is a big deal. Um, ECG, not so much. That's right. It's not certified in Malaysia yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and you can't use it in Malaysia. But you don't, lo- you don't miss it. You don't miss it, yeah. You, so, so if you're asking us, okay, what, what Apple Watch should I get? I mean, if you can afford it, yeah, go for the latest and greatest, which is the Series 5. But the ECG, I, the Compass, I don't know. I'm using the Series 4. Uh, you're using the two. Series 3. Have you, Sorry, series two, uh, yeah. uh, have you ever wished that it had a Compass? Not really. Because for me, think about application-wise. Uh, maybe I don't go like extreme hiking that much. <laughs> but, but let's say you want to use GPS, yeah. right? You normally use your phone, you don't use your watch. Yeah, I yeah. mean, even if I, it had a Compass, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't even know how to use it. Maybe for future applications, I guess. Not yeah. for now. So I get my, my point is, and I don't know whether you agree with me or not. Okay, so if you want a smartwatch, Apple Watch is the gold standard in the ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and if you're wondering now, okay, I'm going to get an Apple Watch. I don't know which one to get. You are fine if you want to get the Series 3. Completely nothing wrong with that because you're not going to lose out on a lot. Um, but if you do want to get the latest and greatest, of course, for sure, go for the Series 5. But if you want a really good deal, Try to find a Series 4. Yeah. You don't miss out on a lot. All right? So that, that's me uh, summing up my opinion on, on the Apple Watch that's been uh, launched, the Series 5. What, I, what is your summary about uh, the Apple Watch? For me, okay, one thing I think we forgot to mention is that the accessories, the strap. Right? One thing I like about Apple, right? regardless of what Apple Watch you're on, Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, you can use the same strap across all. If, if the watch face is the same, lah, right? I mean, you cannot mm-hmm. use a 44 strap with a 40 mm body, right? You can, because the, really? the size are the same. Okay, mm-hmm. let's give it a try. <laughs> okay, You're using a Series that. 4, I'm using Series right. 2. Okay. What size is yours? So mine is a 44 mine, mm. Mine is 42. Okay, so okay. yours is smaller. Yeah, let's put that. Uh, this is the lower end, right? Yep. So, uh, how do I do this? Okay, here you go. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Does it jet out? It doesn't. No, nope, it's perfect. So the board, they maintain the same profile. Oh, yeah. okay. I've always thought that it will jet out because mm-hmm. when you buy the strap, yep. it shows 44, 38, yes, whatever. Yes, correct. Oh, all of them are compatible. So so if you're upgrading from Apple Watch Series 1, you can jump straight to Series 4, Series 5. With no issues, you can keep your same strap. So, okay. So this is like a... If you can see, this is like a smaller... So Alexa's strap uh, body is smaller. Uh, I mean the watch face. Can you see it? It's smaller, right? But the strap fi- fits nicely. So if you can see at the top there, it doesn't. I always thought that it's going to jet out. That's what I thought initially. But yeah. after I found out, the, actually the same. He uses the same kind of strap. 
Oh. So it's pretty good. All right. Yeah. Unlike you know other smartphone makers, you have different sizes. So yeah, different sizes. Then, so it renders all your old straps useless. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. So uh, that's another good point. I mean, if you've been investing in the ecosystem, yeah, all your straps are all compatible. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything else you want to talk about with that's regards about it. to the Apple Watch? Nope, I think that's about it. Alright, so we talked about in great detail uh, about the Apple Watch that's just, uh, that was just launched uh, during the Apple event. The other thing that was launched during the Apple event was obviously the iPad. So the, the iPad now is new and improved. Um, so this is like the entry level iPad. It's now 10.2 inches in terms of the display. Uh, and that means like the original size of the iPad, the 9.7, uh, it's no, gone. no, no longer, no longer exists. It's, yep. uh, it's dead. Um, all right. So Alex, you want to go into detail about the iPad and the specs and uh, where it sits in the range? Okay. So right now, the iPad, uh, this is a seventh edition, mm. seventh generation. So the biggest change is the display. So they move from nine point seven to ten point two, and it still runs on the same Apple A ten chip as the predecessor. So that's the same processor as you get from the iPhone seven. Um, you also get the base model 32 gigs of storage. The rest is basically unchanged. Mm. Uh, you still get Apple Pencil support, like the 6th gen version, mm. but now you can support the smart keyboard, like this one. Cool. So, again, uh, I'm seeing like a theme here with regards to uh, what Apple is doing uh, with the launch of all these new devices. The segmentation is clear. I think previously, when you want to compare devices, right, especially the iPad range, because there's so many, there's two iPad Pros, uh -huh. an iPad Air, an iPad Mini, uh -huh. and then now there's this 7th gen iPad. There's just so many iPads to choose from. But if you look at it closely, you can see uh, the range is very clearly segmented. If you want the cheapest iPad you could get, it would be the newest, which uh -huh. is the iPad uh, seven generation, 10.2 inches. It runs on the A10 processor. Yep. And the great thing is that it's compatible with all of the new accessories. It's compatible with the pencil. Yep. First gen which pencil. Is, yeah, which yep. is really good. Um, I love uh, I love my iPad. I, I use the pencil all the time and it's so intuitive and amazing. I'm, I'm not paid to say this. It's just really yep. good, it's good, right? Hands I'm, down, the best tablet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is the only tablet. There's, yep. there's nothing else out there. So the cheapest one is the newest one. And then if you want like a smaller one, like for reading books and whatever, yep. it's the iPad mini, which is about... Uh, 1699. 1699, 7.9 um, inch. Yeah, 7.9 inch. 7.9 inch, which is 8 inches, okay? And then after that, you have the thin one, which is the iPad Air. That's slightly bigger with, at 10.5 inches. And then if you want to do more of your iPad, obviously you go Pro, right? So there's the new, there's, there's the two iPad Pros, the 12.9 and the 11.11 11 is, is 11. 11 flat, yeah. right? It's very clear. You want to do more of your iPad, go with the Pro versions. You want a smaller iPad, go with the Mini. You want a slightly more powerful iPad, go with the Air. Air. If you just want an iPad, it's just an iPad, iPad right? Yeah. <laughs> And it's great. So can you, okay, I don't remember the prices. You want to walk us through the price? I think the okay. new iPad is super cheap at one one nine nine. Uh, no, the new iPad uh, is one four nine nine. That's for the 64 gig, right? That's a 32 gig base model. Okay, with 32. Wi -Fi. And then you have a one two eight. And then the high spec version, the one two eight gig version with LTE, that's priced at two three nine nine. Two three nine nine. So there's also a one twenty eight Wi-Fi, right? Which yeah, is, base. Which is? Uh, one two eight. Wi-Fi is 1849. So for about 1500 to 1700 ringgit, mm -hmm. you can get a, a decent iPad. Um, I don't see anything wrong with the iPad 10, with this, with this new iPad. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the other great thing is now, all this iPad will be running the new iPad OS, OS. software. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is an even more crucial component in uh, these uh, new iPads because the OS is now so much more open than ever before. I could not remember, I can't remember a time when Apple has such an open ecosystem for its mobile devices. So if you've been using iPhones, uh, I mean, we've been using iPhones. I don't like the fact that there are no file managers. I don't like the fact that I don't know where my files are. I cannot plug in a USB thumb drive to extract files. Well, I can, but it's... Like more like import kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where it goes. Mm. I don't know what to do with them. Uh, for the iPad, I can't plug in a mouse if I need to, yep. right? Now, 
Even the cheapest iPad, which is the ten, uh, with the which is the seven generation ten point two inch iPad, will have all these amazing features. It's amazing because the iPad is such a good device to do work and to consume media on. And Apple has been always been championing the iPad as a computer replacement, and yeah. now with the support for the smart keyboard, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. and it's a legit replacement for a computer. Uh, if you get the pro versions, you can like really do some serious editing, yep. 3D modeling design. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and the the good part is it really blurs. No, it doesn't. Bl it doesn't blur the line anymore because everybody was thinking that oh, should I get an iPad or should I get a computer? The thing is, the iPad is an iPad. It doesn't replace the computer. Not exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think so. I mean, you still need a computer for like really. Hardcore powerhouse editing or whatever that you need to do, right? And and because you know it runs on computer software, so Word and all that. You know, you might argue with me that oh, Word on the iPad is the same as Word on Windows or mm. a Mac. Uh, I don't think so yet, not yet, but it's close. And if you're a mobile, uh, I mean, a person that's doing work all over the place, the iPad is more convenient. And 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 it's just great that Apple has opened up all these things. Yep. And it's not just for the for the iPad. It's also for the iPhone, which we're we're going to talk about a little later. But for now, um, what what we want to talk, what I want to tell you about the the new iPad is that um, the 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 key takeaway for me during the Apple event is that wow. Apple has made it like really clear how they segmented their they seg segment their devices, and I don't feel like they're leaving out anybody. They're not penalizing anybody for mm. buying like a cheaper, cheaper version, iPhone. because I remember when they launched the iPhone XR, mm. I made a lot of noise about how the iPhone XR uh, uses a 720p display, slightly higher than 720p. Okay, yeah. a slightly higher than 720p, <laughs> but also. It uses an LCD display, which uh, which like is really terrible when you compare it next to an iPhone XS. Um, you know, so again, you would argue the iPhone 10, uh, sorry, iPhone 11 uses LCD. It's the same screen, right? But the segmentation now is much um, much better. So yeah. we'll get into that a little later. But what what I'm trying to get is my point is right now is you're not. I don't think you're penalized. So just like the Apple Watch. The cheaper Apple Watch Series 3 at 850 ringgit, mm -hmm. if you buy it, you don't feel like you get a cheaper... You don't feel like you're you losing out. Yeah. yeah, correct. And it's the same thing with the iPad. You get the cheaper 1,400 ringgit iPad, you don't feel like you're losing out. Yes, you can enjoy the same thing. The, the, the multi-screen function is there. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. don't feel like you lose out a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. you don't. Well, maybe maybe, there are maybe a few things like the display. Maybe it's the not speaker, that great. The speaker. Yeah. The court speaker. Yeah. Yeah. The speaker different. and this one. But I, I think they've really balanced out their range. And, I, and I'm amazed because they've never done this before. I mean, at least as far as I can <coughs> remember. Because... I always remember the reason why I'm always pissed off or the reason why I always get frustrated when Apple launches a, a series of devices like why are you doing this? Why are you forcing mm -hmm. us to buy your more expensive stuff? Yep. But with the new range, I don't see that. I don't know. Yep. Do you agree with me on that? Or what yeah. do you, okay, what do you think? I think I think that's I think that's fair because last time it used to be only the iPad Pro you get the keyboard, you get the Apple Pencil. Now they made it available across the range. Mm. So even if you don't have the budget for iPad Pro, you can enjoy the same awesome uh, Apple Pencil even on a budget tablet. Yeah, you're right, yeah. right? So I remember when they first launched the Pencil, right? You could only use it for like a certain uh, certain range of iPads. Yeah. Like the cheaper ones, oh sorry, you can't. You can't. You want the Pencil, you go for the expensive one. Right. And then yeah. uh, I the remember, yeah, before and before that, or if you wanted to do multi-screen, you could only do it on the Pro. Yeah, on the higher version or iPad Air or something, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But now it's available across, across the range. range. And even the plug-in thing, right? Yeah. I would think the all Apple would only allow that on the Pro, Pro because yes. they want to justify, oh, you're working, you're going to transfer files and this all that. This for the makers and yeah. all that, yeah. But now it's across the range. Yep. And and for me, the, 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 the biggest point I want to talk about in this show today with regards to Apple is I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued and I'm happy that they have now opened up. So my last, the last iPhone that I've ever really wanted and that I've ever really bought was the iPhone 4. 
when it was launched, I can't remember when. I think 07 or 08. No, I think it's 11 or something. Yeah. S- somewhere yeah. a long, long time ago. Nick, when was the iPhone 4 launched? So Nick, Nick will get back to us on that. The the last iPhone I bought was the iPhone 4, and I was blown away because it was the first time a phone was made out of glass. Yeah. Uh, and had a metal frame. The design was stunning, and I would still argue with you that the iPhone 4 has one of the best industrial designs of any iPhone. I remember they said they Hands used down. helicopter windscreen yeah, material. Yeah, the the <laughs> glass is uh, is the same that they use from uh, that helicopters use for their um, canopy or yeah. whatever. Um, but after that, everything went uh, downhill. Uh, Apple kind of like that. The 4s came out which is like what is this it's not really an upgrade mm-hmm. the 5, 5 which is like the same but it's, it's not taller. an aluminium body yeah. not really much of a improvement but now with iOS 13 iPad OS watch OS and how clearly the um, devices are segmented i find myself coming back mm-hmm. to Apple <laughs> which is a big deal for me for me it's a big deal because i've always been looking at i've i've always watched closely what apple does and i know that they do a lot of thing with like really deliberate deliberate intent and i know that sometimes when they do things the intent is to force buyers to go and get a higher price device but i'm happy now because they're not doing that you don't feel being penalized for going for a cheap i don't know, but, but what do you think Is, do you mm-hmm. feel the same way? Yeah, I think they're more open now. I mean, they are more fair across the range. And like I said, I, do, I don't think that they are penalizing you for go, for going for a cheaper model. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's fair for Apple. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're done with the iPads, right? So the the takeaway with regards to the iPad is that okay, if you want to get a, the cheapest iPad that you can find, which is the newest, the uh, iPad, iPad 7, 7 gen inch, um, yeah, 7 gen, go ahead. Mid range, iPad Air. Yeah. And then you're going to go the high spec, you go for the iPad Pro. Yeah, so the biggest takeaway is you don't lose out. You don't lose out. You don't need to get an iPad Pro to get a full feature. You get the same features on all the iPads and that's really amazing. So if you're looking for an iPad, you're fine to get the cheaper one. If you're going to like be super pro and and design stuff and do amazing things, obviously get the iPad Pro. Uh, you want a small iPad to put it in your purse or in your back pocket if you have a big <laughs> enough back pocket, the iPad mini is the way to go. I don't know where the iPad Air sits. It's just a slightly mm-hmm. higher it's a range. It's a cheap, version. It's like it would, in a way, I would say it's like a cheaper version of an iPad Pro. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to future-proof your iPad but not spend too much on it and still get a big display, maybe the iPad Air is the way to yeah. go. The segmentation is clear, lah. So if you have any comments, suggestions, you agree with what I say, you don't agree with what I say, you agree with Alex, you don't agree with Alex, you agree with both of us, don't agree. Let us know in the comments. We love to hear what you think about. What the new iPads uh, are all about? Um, let us know in the comment section, and we'll be more than happy to reply and read them. So um, that that's going to be something that we look forward to. All right, we're now in the final section of let's talk about, and in this section we're going to talk about the iPhone 11, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max. But before we go into that, I want to talk a little bit about. No, I think I'll talk about the iOS 13 later. I um, think 13 is the lucky is Apple's lucky number. I think iOS 13 is a significant not just improvement, but it's a significant shift in Apple's strategy or mantra or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Um, that has really gotten me intrigued. That that you know it has now attracted me back to the brand. So I've been very skeptical about Apple. For the longest time, uh, since my last iPhone, which is the iPhone 4, that was launched in 2010, but now with the iPhone 11 and iOS 13, I'm genuinely intrigued. But before before I go into all the details about that, I want Alex to talk about the iPhones. So what do we have? So well, I think we have seen all the details before the phone is launched. Yeah. So the iPhone 11 series uh, now comes in. Uh, you know, you have two Pro models. So they removed the 10 and 10s from the lineup. Mm. So they just call it the iPhone Pro to signify that this is the best iPhone range. And for the normal uh, entry level version, it's called the iPhone 11. Uh, 
and the iPhone 11 is basically the successor of the iPhone 10R, which comes with a 6.1 inch uh, IPS display, yeah. and the iPhone Pro models that come with the OLED display, which is essentially the the, the direct successor of the 10s and 10s Max. Okay, so yep. you wrote in an article, right? Um, Apple upgraded the iPhone 11, everything. Yeah. Except for one thing. So can you elaborate on what do you mean by that? Like they upgraded. Okay, what did they upgrade, mm-hmm. and what didn't they upgrade with the iPhone? 11. Okay, if you want to compare it with the iPhone XR, it's upgraded in almost every aspect. So you get the same processor as the Pro model, which is the A13 Bionic chip. Mm. Uh, you also get the new um, improved stereo speakers. Apparently now it has better surround sound for a mm. better immersive uh, experience. Mm. You also get the latest cameras that can do night mode. For the first time on Apple, you can do night mode, mm. finally. And you also get the same uh, ultra wide angle camera as well. And of course, they also improved the battery life, which I think is probably attributed to the new processor, which is more efficient. You also upgraded the water resistance as well. So it now supports IP68. Oh, previously it doesn't? Previously it's IP67. So they improved, they, they bumped that up as well. Okay. So almost everything's improved, except the screen. <laughs> it still pushes the, the 326 PPI display, um, like the iPhone XR. So it's like a HD Plus, la, right? HD Plus, yeah. yeah. It's somewhere between... It's not quite full HD, HD. but not quite HD. Yeah. So it's kind of like HD Plus. Yeah, it's 800 something pixels. Resolution, not really big deal, but it's an LCD, right? Yeah. Personally, I have no issues with iPhone XR's display because it still shares the same Retina display uh, pixel density. It's mm. 326 PPI. Mm. So if you're coming from an iPhone 7, iPhone 8, um, it's not a big deal mm. because you're used to that resolution. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the density is fine. It's yeah. just the color. I mean, so um, I uh, talked in, a, in 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 great detail about the 10R and yeah. how I like everything about it, except for the display. Mm. I don't have a problem with the resolution, but I have a big deal that it's an LCD. Mm-hmm. So living in an ecosystem where everything is all that for me, right? The Blacks are not as black, yep. and the whites just bleed. It's not as precise, and uh, so some people like the color output of an LCD, but I like the color output of a OLED because it's more vibrant. Yep. Um, I, you know, but to be fair, on its own, you don't notice it. Yep. Right, so if you're upgrading from a, I don't know, iPhone 8? Yeah, it's the same, it's, 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 or it's, 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 it's iPhone. Yeah, because they've always been non OLEDs anyway. They've yeah. always been like a LCD displays. Yeah. So among all the LCD display iPhones, the 11 is probably the best LCD display iPhone that you can get right now. Yeah. In terms of the segmentation, uh, the interesting thing also that you pointed out is that the iPhone 11 is now priced Lower, so yeah. it starts at three thousand three hundred ninety nine ringgit. Yeah, so it's like two hundred ringgit cheaper than the iPhone XR at, t- at time of launch. Three hundred. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, two hundred. Two hundred ringgit cheaper. Yeah, last time the iPhone XR starts at three five nine nine, and this new one, the iPhone eleven, is three three nine nine. Okay. Yeah. So what about the iPhone eleven and sorry, eleven Pro and eleven Pro, Pro Max? Max? Yeah. Uh, the starting price has dropped as well. So the, the so previously, remember the iPhone XS uh, starts about five thousand ringgit, mm-hmm. and then the iPhone. 10s Max, it can go all the way up to 7,000. So mm-hmm. now they've reduced the price uh, quite significantly. Mm. So the iPhone 11 Pro starts at 4,899, mm. and then the iPhone 11 Pro Max starts at 5,299. And even the highest version with the 512 gigs of storage mm. is priced at 6,899. So there's no more 7,000 ringgit. No more 7,000 ringgit iPhone. Yeah. So the okay, unbelievable, right? Uh, Apple has reduced the, the barrier, price yeah. of the whole range of iPhones. Not just the bottom end, not just the entry level, but the high end is also cheaper than the devices that it replaced before. That's one key thing. I think that's one major shift in Apple's strategy when it comes to acquiring users and upgrading users. The other big thing is that the entry level phones, not the new ones, but the entry level phones, like the cheapest iPhones you can get, are also much cheaper now, right? Yep. So the the cheapest iPhone is an Not iPhone eight, 8 plus yeah. uh, eight. eight which is still pretty good for today's standards. Yeah, and yeah. it starts at two one nine nine. Two thousand two hundred ringgit iPhone. Mm. Uh, with a really good, I mean, not not a really good camera. The camera is not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. And uh, the display is not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad lah, right? Yeah. So, and here's the thing. I go back to me talking to you guys earlier about iOS 13 and how it's the lucky number for Apple. 
the cheapest 2200 ringgit iPhone which is the iPhone 8 and the most expensive which is the 6800 ringgit iPhone 10 uh, iPhone 11 mm -hmm. Pro Max at 512 gigs run the same uh, OS and have the same features yep Meaning, right? The OS is now uh, the same. It's not. It's not new, right? It's not new. Um, all iPhones do the same thing, right? But now the features are amazing because the OS is now open. Um, An emoji, for example, it's something that Apple created and it's very close. You can only before iOS 13, you could only share any emojis in iMessage. Yep. The only way for you to share any emojis in WhatsApp is how? How do you do it? You need to save the file out uh -huh. and then you attach it back on WhatsApp. So you have to record it. Save it and, and then attach it as a WhatsApp attachment. Yeah, last time I don't know what's the best way of doing it. I'm, uh, what I did was I need yeah. to send it to myself somehow and yeah. save it from there. Yeah, so yeah. it's tedious. But it's something fun, right? Yeah. I, and Apple could easily say, look, we're not going to allow people to use an emoji other than iMessage. But what they're doing is they're allowing an emoji to be available in a lot of messaging platforms when iOS 13 becomes available for all the compatible uh, iPhones, right? And for me, that small thing uh, signifies like a change in consciousness for Apple. Like they understand, okay, for us to get more people to come into the ecosystem, we need to make the ecosystem more open. open. Same goes with the file manager as well. Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> I have my Note 10 and I have an iPhone. I like my iPhone because of the ecosystem. I like that I can airdrop stuff from my um, iPhone to my iPad. I like that I can copy stuff mm -hmm. from my iPhone and paste it on my iPad. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. But I don't like that I cannot manage my files. Yeah. I don't like that I cannot transfer files easily outside of the iOS ecosystem. But with iOS 13, you're, you're able to do that. Yeah. It's well, so unapple for them to do it. <laughs> I mean, to say it's so unapple is like, it's sounds bad but this is good it's good yeah it's an apple in a good way that now i genuinely am finding myself desiring an iphone 11 pro i like it because it has a wide angle camera yep. for once yep. um i like it. i like what apple is doing because they also retain the same um wide angle camera with the iPhone 11 yep. and they removed the telephoto. We had a discussion about that. Telephoto lenses are not practical yeah. at all, right? I mean, I mean, it's good to have it, but if you have to choose what to pick for the second camera, it's best to go for ultra angle. Yeah. Because zooming in, you can just get closer, but if you're in a tight spot, right, you can't do anything about yeah. it. So let's say if I want to take a group shot, group shot or like a shot of a dinner table and I'm like behind yep. a wall, uh, my back is against a wall, I can't do anything. Yeah. A wide angle would save my life for that, yeah. right? You mentioned about the wide angle, okay. <clears throat> a lot of people complain that uh, later the video will show uh, the the three uh, the, the camera array the, 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 the way ugly. the camera is arranged is is ugly. Um, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not being biased or anything. I think it's the key word here is I think it's iconic. So when you like the Mate Twenty, yeah, when you put it against your ear, people will know it's an iPhone yeah. Eleven, and we because there's three cameras on the Eleven Pro, people will know that. It's There's an a iPhone 11 Pro. I think that's smart. Yeah. I guess people buy a phone because it's a status symbol yeah. most of the time. That's the reason why a lot of case makers have <coughs> a hole where, <laughs> uh, where the Apple logo, logo is. It's because it is a status symbol. But beyond being a status symbol, there's also a technological reason, right? Yep. You mentioned to me before. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> because the thing a lot of you don't get is that uh, Apple's doing the triple cameras differently. And what Apple trying to achieve is that they want to make three cameras don't feel like as if you have three cameras. They want to make it feel seamless as if you have one camera. Okay, what, what, what do you mean by that? So, like for example, um, if you use a triple camera smartphone or quad camera smartphone, you notice that if you change between different modes, it feels like you're changing different cameras. Like the colors different, the saturation is different. And what Apple want to achieve is that they want to make all three cameras feel like they're the same cameras, as in the same characteristics. So what Apple says during their launch is that they actually um, do a lot of calibration to ensure that the color settings are similar mm. across all three. Mm. And they, zero, they also do uh, a pairing for the modules and they do extra calibration between the modules as well to make sure that you know, there's not much dramatic difference. Right, so I guess that's something like really typically Apple. They put in a lot of effort on things people don't even like consider. See, yeah. <coughs> so, example right, for 
this, my Note 10 Plus. The camera is arranged um, like that, like right? Vertic well. vertically. It's right? Honor 20 Pro. Um, the thing is, what's that? Honor 20 Pro. Uh, Honor 20 Pro. Okay, yeah. so the thing is, um, what Alex is saying is that there's every time you shift to a camera, right? So there's a wide angle telephoto and an ultra wide. Every time you shift from a wide angle to a uh, telephoto, the focus or the alignment yes. shifts, shifts because of the way the lens are arranged. And not just that, they're using different <coughs> sensors. And it's different sensors, yes. right? Some is 12, some is 16, 16, some are 8. Yeah. Yeah. What Apple did with the iPhone 11 and the Pro, the way the lenses are arranged, the shift is minimized. Yeah. Not just physically, but also the software and the hardware has yeah. been optimized to make sure that there's no shift in terms of the focus, there's no shift in terms of the white balance, yep, the framing, and, and, all that, and yeah. there's no shift in, in terms of like the, the sharpness and everything. And I, I haven't used the iPhone 11 yet. It's not it's not available. It's going to come to Malaysia on the 27. <coughs> but I think that's amazing. I yeah. think that wow, I didn't I didn't consider that. I mean, it's a talking point. So if I do get an iPhone 11 Pro. And people say, oh, that's ugly. It's a conversation piece. I can yeah. tell them, look, did you know that it's arranged this way so that I can take back to better pictures? Yeah, there's a reason behind yeah. the design. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, to me, that's good design. Good design is not having a stroke just because you can have a stroke. Good design is, okay, I need to have the stroke there to balance this and that. And that is good design. And, and, and for me, that's the epitome of, of Apple. Yeah. La. You know, the more I try to tell you guys that, Apple is doing all these amazing things with the iPhone 11. The more I'm like really convincing myself <laughs> to like, like get one. I don't know. Okay, you guys sharing what your opinions are about this whole range. Yep. Well, what do you think? I think this time is pretty complete, and I think um, they make more significant differences. Um, in terms, even even in terms of design, um, they finally got rid of the 10s design, 10 design. So yeah. now, what what they like? The 10s design is already how many years old? Uh, two years. Alright. Yeah. And it's looking dated lah. I mean, yeah, because everyone's copying the same design. Yeah. So <laughs> you can get a Xiaomi Mi A3 and it's going to have the same thing. Yeah. And also another thing that I like is that they added a new type of uh, treatment to the glass. So now mm. it's like a frosted kind of glass at the Where back. the camera is, right? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. So it's most, it looks more seamless. It mm -hmm. looks more iconic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it's all in the details lah. Yeah. And I think they, everybody in Apple, if you guys are watching this, I don't know if you do, but if you are, I mean, you guys are doing, I, it feels to me now that yes, you guys are really working hard and you guys are really wanting your customers. You, that, then now I'm telling people, yeah, you should get an iPhone because there's nothing, I don't see anything missing. Yep. Uh, you have an ultra wide angle lens, you have an open-ish uh, open ecosystem, but now you have also an e ecosystem that's like, like magic and mm -hmm. yeah you wanted to say something yeah and finally mm -hmm. apple they have included the fast charging side the pro models in the box in the box 18 yeah. watts for the pro models yeah yeah so previously you know how kiam <laughs> siap uh, you zack <laughs> zack will put like the translation yeah. Yeah. apple was they have fast charging in their phones but to get fast charging you gotta buy a fast charging adapter, adapter and, a and a fast charging cable, cable. yes a usb-c to lightning and, and uh, okay so that sums up why i I'm furious when Apple launches stuff. It's because it's like an, uh, an arrogance. It's a deliberate arrogance to say like, oh, it's okay, people are going to yeah. just buy it because they want it. Yeah, and 7,000 okay. ringgit phone and yeah. no fast charger, yeah. 5 watt charger. Yeah, and it's okay because, you know, we can charge people, people will just buy it. It's that arrogance that annoys the hell out of me when, when I, I review and read about Apple products. But now, I, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't see that. It's like, hey, okay, if you want a cheap iPhone, sure, get a cheap iPhone. Yeah. It's, it's as good as an expensive iPhone. You want to get a cheap iPad, get a cheap iPad. It, it's as good as an yeah. expensive iPad. You want to get a cheap <coughs> Apple Watch, get a cheap Apple Watch. Yeah. It's just as good. Yeah. And I like that. And I like that. So the only problem I have, I don't know whether you agree with me, maybe you don't. With the iPad, uh, sorry, with the iPhone, is the display. The notch. So I now with the pinhole displays and mm -hmm. dewdrop display yep. and pop-up pop cameras, cameras. And whatever, the iPhone has the biggest notch of any expensive device, at least. Well, and for it's an issue for me because I I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm spoiled mm -hmm. with the note. Um, but for me, I don't see that as a problem because you it's know it's okay. Firstly, it's iconic. I mean, there's character to it, and. <sighs> 
as you all know, right, iOS is no notification, there's, so there's no need for the extra space on top. And what you get... There, it, there, no, there is a need, dude. I can see more things. There's no notification. Okay, like, <coughs> like what? Okay, for example, watching videos, right? Uh-huh. Do you actually zoom in? I don't, because don't, everything, yeah. everything gets cropped out. Correct. And now most of the phones, right, you get taller displays <coughs> like this, right? Mm. If you're going to zoom in, right, you're going to get a lot of cropping in the sides. So at the end, you're going to watch at a normal uh, resolution. So you look at normal resolution, right? You're going to see the black bars at the side. So I, uh, it's not a big deal to I, me. Well, I don't know. It annoys me. But because of the notch, right? Yeah. It has more sensor. It has face ID, which is getting more reliable. Okay I think it's, yeah. it's, I better, it's better than other things that locks that uses one camera. Okay, so I agree with that. Um, I guess you're right. The notch is necessary so that you don't Sacrifices. compromise yeah. that ease of unlocking yep. um, um, I've been you know apparently uh, with Face ID people are now securing their devices more than before people yep. are using passwords more than before I mean that they're using Face Unlock more so what has inevitably happened is that people are now securing their devices more because it's easier to secure their devices uh, in the iOS ecosystem okay now move on to my note right it has face, face recognition, but it's not the 3D mapping face recognition. There's no iris scanner anymore. It's basically a picture matching, uh, matching thing. It's an optical thing, right? I don't feel that's more secure, so I've opted out from using face recognition on my Note 10. Instead, I use in-display fingerprint recognition, which is slow. Okay. I don't like it. Um, I think Rory will disagree. Because uh, he's, I don't know how he does it, but he, it's faster. It's faster on him. I don't know. What do you think of uh, in-display fingerprint scanners? Um, <coughs> for me, it's, it's it's getting faster. It's more convenient than Face ID because you can unlock it on the phone. But one thing I look forward to in the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro series is that um, apparently they have improved the Face ID camera, so you can actually unlock it at extreme angles. Can you can you unlock it like this now? I'm not too sure. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, because so there's something that, that, that annoys me. Because you can do it on an iPad Pro, yeah. but you can't do it on an iPhone. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't it. know why. Yeah. So, you know, when you're sleeping, you're about to sleep, you want to watch some YouTube video. or Netflix or whatever, and you're like Lying doing that, that, and then uh, the face recognition doesn't work. It doesn't work in, in, in landscape, like in portrait. All right, so uh, we're di- digressing. So the point that I'm trying to make is, okay, I don't like the notch, but you're right. Maybe it's there because... It's more secure. Yeah. It allows for that better and more secure face yep. facial recognition. recognition. And it doesn't compromise on turning on the display and immediately being able to use it, compare, comparing it to um, in-display fingerprint scanners. Um, okay, I agree. But I think Apple can do it differently so that the notch is not there. What do you guys, th- what do you guys think? Is the notch iconic or is the notch a sad excuse for not innovating? I'm, I feel bad saying that because I really think Apple is, has done a lot in this, in this launch. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. It's time for wrapping up this segment. Um, Alex, what do you think? I think Apple has done something different this time and I think they have a device for everyone this time. And like you said, right, uh, iOS 13 has opened up a lot of things mm. which were closed previously. And I'm looking forward to try out iOS 13 and also the new iPad OS. Yeah, well, yep. I agree. I think Alex summed it very well. Uh, I will trademark this. Uh, iOS 13 <laughs> is Apple's lucky number. Uh, they have now ha- they now have a really amazing ecosystem, but one that is also friendly with other with people who are on other ecosystems, and that that's getting me really excited. I like the iPhone 11, especially the 11 Pro. Um, because now it has an ultra wide angle camera, which is something I use every day, and I can't I can't wait to try out uh, how the ultra wide is implemented in the iPhone. Um, I also like that how Apple has now clearly segmentized cheap, uh, medium, and low uh, and high end devices across their range, not just the phones, the iPad, and also the Apple Watch. It's very clear now, if you want to buy a cheaper phone, you can. And I'm, I applaud Apple for not penalizing people who want to go into the Apple ecosystem, but not necessarily have the funds to go into the uh, ecosystem. So for me, this, and this is my key takeaway actually in this episode, is that this shift is, al- is really going to like transform this, this Apple ecosystem thing and it, it's going to take them farther um, so yeah that's pretty much it I'm looking forward to try out the iPhone 10 
uh, you, uh, iPhone 11. <laughs> You're looking forward yep. to try out the uh, iPhone iPhone 11. What do you guys think? What if you have any comments, suggestions, questions? Let us know. We thrive on your uh, on your feedback to make this show better. And we're gonna have a podcast version of this really soon. So keep a lookout. We'll make an announcement later. All right, that's pretty much it from me. This is LTA. Uh, I'm Amin. This is Alex. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. And as always, catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. Wait. For the first time, mm. they're launching the iPhone in Malaysia one week after US. Okay, so we've been covering everything. Uh, we forgot to mention one thing. The other good thing about this phase of uh, this this launch cycle, right? For the first time ever, we uh, we've been bu- Malaysia has been bumped up to the second, second phase. Phase second deliver yeah. se- second wave second wave of the Apple launch. So, Previously, we've never gotten this, yeah, right? The closest maybe is three weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah o- o- on average, it's about a month, month la, yeah. right? So right after the US and Singapore, um, I think uh, the second week, right? Immediately, we're getting the iPhone and uh, all of the other new devices. That is a significant development because that just shows that Malaysia is an important market to Apple. That also shows that in Malaysia, a lot more people are buying the iPhone. Yeah. Or Apple devices, and uh, and that mm, explains a lot. I mean, we we're, we're kind of like a very price sensitive market segment. Uh, yeah. We like value buys, and we don't like really want to spend a lot of money on on a- Apple devices. I guess maybe contracts are helping. Yep. But it's just a good news that they are coming on the twenty seventh. So if you're looking out for the iPhone eleven, eleven Pro, and eleven Pro Max, along with the iPad and the Apple Watch Series five, get ready for it on the 27th. As always, watch uh, Sergio.com on YouTube and catch us on Sergio.com for all the latest news on Apple and iPhone. And we'll probably be there during the launch and we'll be able to provide you with the latest reviews and opinions on the iPhone and everything else about Apple right then. Okay, right. so that's pretty much it. Catch you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>